at the World Economic Forum this year in Davos, Switzerland, technology and the future of technology as being an essential part of where the global economy is growing is something that's being looked at very, very closely. We have all sorts of technology that's being discussed. We're looking at the future of cryptocurrencies. We're looking at the future of artificial intelligence. But we're also looking at drone technology. And drone technology is something which has evolved much more than just for warfare or for games. Uh, drone technology is something which has a tangible economic benefit. Joining us now to look at this, Timothy Reuter. Timothy is head of drones in tomorrow's airspace at the World Economic Forum. He's also somebody who's worked in this area for uh, quite some time. Uh, it's great speaking to you, Timothy. Um, firstly, the India Connect and how in the state of Maharashtra, there is huge potential for the use of drones. How? Wonderful. Yes. So the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution at the World Economic signed a memorandum of understanding with the state government of Maharashtra to look at all the different ways that drones can be used to improve government services. And right now, farmers have been suffering uh, under drought conditions. And so our partnership is beginning with looking at how drones can improve agricultural outcomes. And we had a workshop keynoted by the chief minister in November of last year, where we brought together all the stakeholders to look at how drone mapping can be used to improve irrigation systems and agricultural yields. And we're very excited to be continuing that work with the state government. Yeah. Uh, in terms of some of the new technologies which, uh, which, which you now see in terms of, of drones and uh, con consumer appliances, where exactly are we going with this technology? For a broader audience, what exactly can we see in the next few years? Right. So this is a very exciting time for drones in India specifically. Uh, starting in December of last year, the government issued the first regulation that permits the commercial use of drones. Now, this uh, is allowing applications like mapping for agriculture, infrastructure inspection, um, but they're also beginning to work on the version 2.0 of the regulation that will allow additional use cases like drone delivery. Uh, and we can imagine that being rolled out in support of health campaigns, mm -hmm. like the vaccination campaign the government is undertaking, um, as well as delivery of consumer goods, like what's being talked about by Amazon and Google. Yeah. How safe would that be, I mean, realistically, to actually have drones working in, in crowded environments like our right. cities to be delivering parcels? How do we ensure it doesn't end up falling on someone's head? Right. So. I, right now, what the government is doing is starting off with pilot programs and looking at creating dedicated corridors so they can gather the data and better understand the safety case. The other thing that the government is doing that's very wise is putting in place infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a digital skies platform that's going to enable them to track in real time where all the drones are so they can assure that they're not violating any of the regulations or laws. Yeah. And in the near future, in terms of the load that a drone can yeah. carry, how, how much, what weight would it be, what would the payload be, essentially? So most of what we're seeing around the world right now is uh, light lift last mile delivery, so five kilogram packages. Um, but we're beginning to also see heavy lift drone delivery coming online with things like 500 kilograms or a ton. And that's really going to be transformative to how we think about supply chains and logistics. So just looking, say, 10 years from now, yeah. given the pace at which the technology is developing, reliability, obviously, of the motors of drones, of communication systems, of the corridors that you're talking about, 10 years from now in big cities around the world, or even if it's not big cities, what will we see as yeah. users of drone technology? So 10 years down the line, I think we're going to start seeing people carrying drones. Wow. And you know, essentially, the technology around aerial autonomy, uh, electric propulsion, and integrated traffic management are going to provide a new form of aviation that will allow people to move around highly congested cities like Delhi in a more efficient manner. Because it's not possible to build enough terrestrial infrastructure to keep up with the pace of urbanization and population growth. And in just 10 years from now, that's where we are headed. I mean, the technology is already in place prototyping properly for carrying human beings. Yes, I think corridors. actually the bigger challenge is going to be getting the regulation right. Yeah. 
And so what we've seen is that the technology is advancing more rapidly than the policy is. And these would be autonomous systems, right, that you're talking about? They move by right. themselves. It's not going, there's not going to be a pilot, per se. So starting off, most of the platform makers are talking about beginning with pilots, but there's already a pilot shortage. So in order for this to scale up, and also bring down the cost so it can be something useful to the ordinary person, they're going to have to become autonomous. Well, Timothy, it's uh, been fantastic speaking to you, getting an idea of, of where this technology is going and, and where in Maharashtra in a real-time basis very soon we can actually see a great deal of work being done. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks you for having me on. Well, there you have it, a look at drone technology into the future, not so far into the future. It's not just about parcel delivery, it's not just about agricultural uses, but in urban centers, the use of drones to even carry human beings from point A to point B, that's something that's going to happen in the not-too-distant future. Mm -hmm.